Right, one of the beauties of running is its simplicity. All you basically need is a set of trainers, head outdoors, and off you go. It really is very accessible. However, have you ever thought that some of the things that you are doing on your runs could in fact be ruining your runs? I'm gonna put my hands up here because I have made countless mistakes over the years, and today I'm going to be listing them for you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. Okay, so the pacing of your run is a pretty obvious and good place to start off with because if you get this wrong, well, you could start digging yourself a pretty deep, dark hole very early on, very quickly, and potentially not really recover from throughout the course of your run. So initially, when you do head out of the door, make sure that you're not starting off too fast. You want to warm yourself and your body up nice and gradually. Perhaps even for the first five minutes or so, start off at a walking pace before building into a gentle jog, before finding your rhythm and your pace for the rest of the run. Talking of which, your pace for the run. Well, this is obviously very individual and very personal, but you do need to think about your target for the run. If it's meant to be a nice, easy and conversational run, then make sure it is a nice, easy and conversational pace. It's very easy, and I see this time and time again, to try and do your runs at a nice, impressive average pace. Now, if you're doing that for each and every one of your runs, week in, week out, well, that is just not sustainable, and it's also asking for injury. Equally, don't start adding intervals and speed work in or something too hard too soon if your body is not ready for it. Because again, that could be the cause of injury. Now, another factor that can lead to injuries is running on new or unfamiliar terrains and surfaces. Now, this slightly pains me saying this because I'm all about heading off road and exploring on my runs, but if you're not used to running on some of these surfaces, well, you should be really careful. Now, again, I'm not saying don't head off road, don't explore, just be mindful. Now, some of these surfaces I'm talking about are kind of rocky, unstable, slippy, muddy kind of surfaces. Anything where you might potentially twist or roll your ankle or clip your feet, fall over, slip, so on and so forth. Now, if you are new to this kind of running and running on these kind of surfaces, then what I say is just shave your runs down by around 20, 25% basically because as you go on through your runs, you will start to fatigue, and that's when you're more susceptible to making these injuries. Now, I've done this on countless runs in the past, particularly my longer runs, as you start to explore and try and find new routes, and towards the end, you are tired, and that's where the mistakes happen. And yes, I've fallen flat on my face numerous times before. But over time, having running on these surfaces, you do start to build up a certain strength, stability around your joints, particularly your ankles, and proprioception. So, Hopefully, if you're sensible, you can start to build these runs up with time and as you go on. Okay, next one. Do you ever find yourself rushing for the loo mid-run or perhaps even mid-race. Now, this is a bit of an uncomfortable subject for many people, but your eating and drinking habits can play havoc on your stomach. And yet, yeah, it can be incredibly annoying and can ruin some of your runs and races. Now, firstly, we want to address when you're eating and drinking. Now, I would always advise having any sort of bigger, heavier meals a good two to three hours in advance of your run or in advance of your workout. That just allows that food, time for it to settle and to be digested, rather than heading out and that food still being there because your body is going to shift all its energy towards your muscles and away from your stomach. And that food is just going to slosh around and that's where some issues arise. Now you can probably get away with having some lighter, smaller snacks around 45 minutes to an hour before you run just to keep you going, but bigger meals, just be wary. And if that doesn't help or fix things, then perhaps it's time to take a look at the types of foods that you are eating and taking on regularly. Now, you of course wanna make sure that you have a well-balanced and healthy diet, but some of those foods could be causing GI issues. Now, common ones are dairy, gluten, perhaps even too much fiber. Now, through a bit of trial and error, maybe eliminate one at a time and find out if they help, if at all. Practice that in your training, and then of course, 
maybe take that forwards into race day. And then finally, what about caffeine? Now, not, of course, not everyone is a coffee addict, but for many people out there, it is a staple part of their daily routine. But could that be essentially triggering things? Now, again, be mindful of your timing of having a coffee or caffeine in your daily routine and maybe have it a good hour or so in advance and that will give you time to pop to the loo and have that final stop before you head out for your run. Now another thing that can certainly ruin a run is your clothing choice, in particular your running shoes. Get these wrong and you'll know about it all too soon. Now here at GTM we have joked in the past about the numerous different stereotypes within triathlon. In particular, I'm thinking about the Magpie today. Those that are attracted to the newest, the latest, the greatest products that have been released. But with running shoes, they really are very personal and individual. When you find a pair that work for you, I would really recommend sticking to them or sticking to that model or similar rather than bouncing around between the newest, the greatest, the latest stuff or just something that's got a nice colorway. Also the same applies for clothing, find what works for you and try it out before perhaps heading out for a race or for a long run because any ill-fitting clothing could end up rubbing, chafing. Same also obviously applies for running shoes. You want to bed them in on some shorter runs before heading out for a longer run or in a race. And then finally, running partners. Now obviously these can have a big positive impact on your running because it makes it more enjoyable. It's someone to run with and also can make you more accountable to someone, getting you out of the door and getting that run done. However, they can also have a negative impact on your running if you're running with the wrong running partner. Now I'm talking about those that are perhaps too fast for you, beyond your ability level, or those that are perhaps too slow for you. Those that are too fast are potentially going to push you far beyond your ability and your normal running pace, and therefore overworking you, potentially making you more prone to injury. Those that are running too slow, less of an issue normally, however, you could end up altering your formal techniques so much to run that slowly that again, could make you more prone to injury. And it's not to say you shouldn't run with people, but just find the right running partner for you. And it's another reason why joining a running club or a triathlon club is such a good idea because you will have more people to choose from, a bigger pool of athletes as such. Now, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Let us know if you've made any of these mistakes today. I certainly have. If so, get involved in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give us a follow over on social media. And if you're not doing so already, make sure you're subscribed just down below.